Meta S right now. Please welcome the wonderful, inimitable Mr. Manu Bennett. Good to see you back here. I didn't even know I had this panel. <laughs> but hi, guys. A nice surprise for hey. you then. Yeah, yeah, right <laughs> at the end. Thank you. <laughs> so it's good to see you back. What have you been up to since we last saw you? I think Scotland, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Look, I, 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 I went to Vancouver. I, sh I shot a couple more episodes for, for Arrow. So, you know, for you fans of the Slave Yeah, a few fans yeah. of Arrow out there, definitely. Yeah. yeah, so we've got uh, these two episodes that come up in about five or six. In, uh, in season six, where Slade encounters a very naughty boy, his son. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, his son, Joe. And uh, yeah, the storyline was really interesting. You know, I mean, I think, you know, you've got the origin story where Slade, you know, meets Oliver on the island. And I guess it's kind of like a paternal relationship between them. But, uh, you know, to really cut to the chase with Slade, you know, we don't really know much about his history. And uh, so, you know, the storyline that happens with, with Joe is uh, something that really sort of unfolds a lot of stuff that I don't think is uh, uncovered yet. I, people often ask me, you know, what was my favorite scene for the character in, uh, in season one and two? And there was a moment where I was sitting over a, a campfire with, uh, with Oliver, and I, I looked at him and, I, and I, I told him how I got on the island. With, does anybody know this scene? How many people watch Arrow here? <laughs> okay, a, a few of you know this. So, you know, I was, I was sitting, you know, over a campfire with, with Oliver and I, uh, and I said, you know, I, I got onto the island with a guy called Billy Wintergreen, and he betrayed, you know, he betrayed me, you know, and, uh, and, and then I say that he was the godfather to my son, Joe. And there's this little glimpse of Slade's history, which was never touched on again, you know, you never really sort of, for the rest of the, you know, season one and two, you never really talked about his background. So, um, so yeah, Dave, so Mark Guggenheim took a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, took the advantage of using th this, these two episodes that we just did to reveal a bit more about Slade and um, his relationship with his son. Well, it's fantastic. I mean, he's obviously been thinking about bringing you back then to season six for a while, and it's something that a lot of fans out there have been really waiting to see. And it's great that you're back for a sort of multiple episode art, basically. So, um, yeah, it yeah. Well, I can't really talk about it, but it opens up a whole can of worms, really. <laughs> yeah. You know, so Mark Guggenheim's kind of laid a lot of, uh, you know, uh, potential openings for, for more storyline. But, uh, yeah, we've got we to see what happens because Joe Manganiello's going to be in the film. Mm -hmm. which, uh, <laughs> which is great, you know. Joe, Joe's actually a guy that I met uh, a few years ago. And him and I met at uh, San Diego Comic Con, and when we had a great chat, we actually had a lot in common in a, in our you know in the history of before we were actors, and so so you know I've had some very personal conversations with 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 Joe in the past, and and, and regard him as a friend, and you know he's uh, he's got a great opportunity to take Deathstroke to the big screen, you know, and I hope it's a, a real opportunity for him. It will be, you know, and he's, you know, I mean, who who knows Joe Manganiello, or is aware of him. Yeah, you know, he's, 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 he's a very talented guy, you know, and he's, he's got a really strong physique. So for this sort of a, this sort of a role, you know, he'll, uh, he'll fit the Deathstroke suit well. You know, I, I, yeah. I think I was lucky because as a television series, you know, you get to develop a character over such a long arc, mm -hmm. you know, and I think I got to put a lot of gray matter in there for Slade. You know, I got to, got to really make that character build, you know, on, on so many multiple levels. Whereas, you know, if you do a film, you're kind of constrained in time to, to actually develop a character. But, you know, it'll look good, that's for sure. I mean, Deathstroke, the movie's going to look good. I just hope it's R-rated and really <laughs> full on, you know, because a Deathstroke, a Deathstroke film should be, yeah. Um, I mean, in terms of uh, Slade on Arrow, um, do you think we're going to see more, like I said, we'll learn more about his past history. Do you think that'll be in flashbacks then or will be more just conversations, do you think, between the other characters? Or you don't are, you, know? are you looking for spoilers? Well, not particularly. <laughs> spoilers? Well, you know, I mean, the series is inherent for having flashbacks, you know, and a lot of stuff that needs kind of like, uh, you know, without giving anything away, you know, the way that they approach this Slade 
and and his son Joe, the way they approach this story, is you know it it, it uses the tools that Arrow's known for to give you you know stuff that you need to fill the gaps. But uh, but it was really wonderfully crafted. You know, I worked with these two different directors. You know, there was one director for five and one for six, and we, we were given a script. You know. For, for each for each episode, you know, we, we really worked on it. Uh, it was it was one of these really great amalgamations creatively, where you know the page was sort of the bones of the of, of each episode, but you know they they gave me a lot of you know leverage to say, hey, what about what about like this, you know? And on television, it's hard to do that because you, you you're moving so fast that you know it's it's hard to have conversations on set but mm -hmm. you know the both directors were were, were very very uh, open to working uh, working with me through this this these uh, these developments because i, I guess I'm, in, I'm i'm you know i'm i you know i mean once you get into you know your third year of creating a character you're inside that character mm -hmm. and you know sometimes the writers will write it in a way that they see it but you get to feel it a certain way and it's great to work with directors when you say hey my instinct on this is this and they go like yeah that's great mm -hmm. you know and mark guggenheim you know gave me a lot of support in terms of you know bringing back the character strong mm. fantastic and um in terms of what we're going to see with Slade, what I realized was there's kind of a common theme there between Shannara and between Arrow, because it's you're in both shows there's a long lost child essentially that will be returning. So what do you think is gonna be sort of the overriding emotion for Alan on and for Slade when they reunite with their kids? Oh um, yeah look I mean I mean the thing is is that both are a, a dramatic tool. You know, I mean what's the closest thing to somebody's heart is their is their own child, you know. So you know, this is you know I've 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 kids, so I, so I understand this this narrative, you know, and and it, it's it's great because I mean you know, say say for Arrow, you know, you probably think that the closest relationship that Slade ever formed in Arrow was Oliver, mm -hmm. so how can it be deeper than that? You know, how can how can you get more conflict? You know, his own child, you know, and and, and it's and it's and it's wonderful, you know, it's it's really well crafted, both episodes, you know. And, and it's and it's you know when you when you think about an action show you know you wonder well you know how do you get in with the violins and everything as far as the relationship goes but but you wait and see like what goes down between Slade and Joe Wilson is pretty intense mm -hmm. you know and and it, and it was great you know I mean in terms of what it required of me as an actor you know I I don't like you know sort of getting somewhere and thinking like oh I've done that that beat before you know I've I've played that this this was all new territory you know. And it really, it really, uh, it was really a push as well. You know, afterwards, I, you know, the directors were like, "Ah, oh, God, we've really, really nailed that." You know, and that's going to be the audience is going to love it. So, so I guarantee you, when when it, when it does come around, episode five and six of season six, you're gonna you're gonna get, get gonna a good get it. a good dose of, uh, of of Slade and Joe Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things we love about you playing Slade is the action part of it. And obviously, you've done a lot of action in various shows. So, how does it, playing Deathstroke compare to, say, playing Alanon, fighting in different ways? Uh, well, you know, the, the fighting, and I've always said this. You know, like when when I did Spartacus and I played Crixus, I did all my own fights. You know, in New Zealand, we have a different legislation for for like like in America, if you spill a cup of coffee in, in McDonald's, you can sue people, you know? It's kind of crazy. Whereas in New Zealand, we don't have that sort of, any of that sort of regulation. We're actually quite restricted in terms of how you can sue. You can't, you can't sue in the workplace in New Zealand. So like if I got a sword in my eye, I couldn't sue my producer. The government would end up paying me a certain amount of money for medical fees and lost income and whatnot, but you can't actually sue. So, so in New Zealand, like they were like, "Oh, it's fine. Go and fight each other. You know, beat, <laughs> beat each other up. You know, which was great." With real swords? Oh, absolutely! I got stabbed three times with real swords. Oh there was there was there was one scene that I did where you know I I kicked a, a character called Juro up against the wall, and he bounced back off the wall and he thrust his sword at me, and we were just about to film that bit of the fight scene and they called lunch. 
And what happens on Spartacus, like you've got 30 guys with swords, everyone just puts their swords on the ground and walks off and has lunch and then comes back and tries to find their sword. <laughs> and I'll just grab whatever sword's there, right? So it just so happened on this particular day there was a real sword lying on the ground. And the young actor who was playing Juro picked up a real sword. And then we went into this scene and it was like I kicked him up against the wall and he came back really fast and he shoved this blade at me. And I just, at the last second, just managed to parry it. And the sword went into my chest and cut across my pectoral muscle and like cut right quite deep in, across my, my chest and wow. started bleeding immediately. And I was like, yo, yo man, is that a real sword? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't be using that sword, kid. <laughs> like trying to stab me right in the heart with it, you know? And I was, I was actually really lucky, you know? Like it was a sharp sword, you know? Like if I'd been a, just a fraction later, it would have gone in. But, um, but, you know, I mean, we love that in Spartacus, you know? I mean, Spartacus, I think the reason why it was so successful was because it was filmed in New Zealand and, and we were all able to go as hard, as hard as we did. You know, we were, we were so regularly going down to the local emergency ward at the hospital. <laughs> I, was, I was a regular, I'd, probably once every three or four weeks I'd go down there. Like, m most of the injuries were like cuts to your hand and your knuckles and you'd break a finger or, but one time I broke three ribs. I had this scene where I was, where I was tackling um, the guy that played Gannicus, Dustin Clare. And they, they put a stunt guy in instead because was, it was going to be shot on Phantom. We had this really great slow motion. It's a thousand frames a second, you know. So when you, when you, when you, when you hit somebody, like the, you, see the, you see the dust go off their body and then they go flying, you get flying through the air and it's all in slow motion. And I knew this one particular tackle was going to look really good as long as I hit him really hard and lifted him and threw him through the air. So they stepped Dustin out and they put this, they put this one guy in for this. And when I say we do our own stunts, this wasn't one that Dustin wanted to do. But this other guy was going to take the, the brunt of it. And I said, oh, I'm going to hit you like as hard as I can, like a football tackle, rugby tackle. And the guy's like, okay, go for it. So, you know, I did and I hit him and I lifted him right up into the air and we went flying through the air. And when he landed, he landed with his knee bent. And I was like coming in at full speed above him and I just crumpled into my rib cage. And it just went pop, pop, pop. And I... And I, and I kind of rolled over and I was like, I couldn't even breathe. I was going, oh. And they went, you okay? I said, oh. And I put my arm up and I was like, oh. And they were like, we have to keep filming. We've got like three hours to go. So I was like, okay, okay, come on, let's go. And we kept f filming for like another three hours or something. You know, and I was doing these fight scenes and everything. I was going, oh, Jesus. And then the next day, we got on the plane and we had to fly to San Diego Comic Con. And you know how they say that you don't want me to fly with broken bones? I was on the flight and I couldn't breathe. I was on this flight and I was just, I was sitting there and, and you know, the, the, they came over and the air hostess and everything, they were going, what? And I said, oh, I injured myself in this, in this fight scene and I couldn't breathe. And I got, I got, to, I got to San Diego, did the, did the convention and then flew back to New Zealand and went to a doctor's and they did, you know, they did the x-ray and they, they came back with the x-ray and they said, you got three broken ribs, which the stunt guys were all like, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, has got three broken ribs, yeah. <laughs> that was your hazing. <laughs> yeah, you know, they, all in. Have we, okay. got, have we got questions? Is there yeah, so if you guys want to ask questions, mm. please go up to the mics. There's one on the left and one on the right, and we will take your questions about whatever you want to ask about, really. <laughs> um, one of the things I wondered as well, because when you were in Return to Arrow this season, pretty much the first thing I wanted to say to you was Felicity going, I never liked you. And I was wondering what is uh, Slade's relationship with Felicity sort of this season because, you know, at one point he did try to kill her. So uh, <laughs> I'm expecting it yeah, to be not so great. Yeah, look, I, I mean, you know, the, the, whole, the whole adaptation of the storyline about the Mirakuru, like, mm. being worn off, you mm. know. I mean, I, I highly doubted that I'd ever be able to write the storyline that, that Slade would resolve in any way with, with, with Oliver. Yeah. You know, it just seemed impossible. I killed his mother, you know. It's not like it's like sorry about that kid, <laughs> you know. But really, like in one scene, you know, and, and and the way that you know, I guess it was the performance. You know, you had to sort of play it. You know, me being playing Slade. You know, I came out of the the cell and I looked at him and I said, you know, hey kid, yeah, it was like a bad dream. I remember everything that happened, but I 
it was the Mirakuru, you know, and he's looking at me going, Slade? You know, and I'm sort of back to that Slade from the island calling him kid and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, within a couple of scenes, it really felt quite normal to be back into that relationship. Mm -hmm. And it, it sort of, you know, put the emphasis on the fact that the Mirakuru was what made the difference. And, um, you know, but, but I mean, when you're encountering a character like Felicity for the first time since, since everything went down between her and I as well, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like, you know, obviously the distrust is still there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you've, got to, you've sort of got to watch what happens in five and six to, to sort of get a full bearing of how, you know, Oliver and Slade have sort of come back to full circle. Mm. Fantastic. Okay, should we take the first question then on this side? Hi there. Um, I was just wondering, because you're such a badass with a eye patch, have you ever considered playing the role of Big Boss in a Metal Gear Solid movie at all? Big Boss, full Metal Solid. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid, yeah. yeah. I think somebody, somebody posted that on, on Twitter. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not aware of the, the series or the, that, you know, that, that particular, but somebody did post that. I, I saw somebody mentioning that. Um, I don't know, kid. I'm, I'm kind of like, you know? <laughs> Joe, Sorry, you just made my day by calling Joe, me that. Joe, <laughs> Joe, Joe Manganiello is going to steal my thunder for a while. You're so, only Deathstroke, don't worry. So, hey, hey. well, thank you, thank you. Mm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, it, it's interesting because it's, it's, it's one of these things where, you know, I'm, I've been doing Shannara Chronicles for the last couple of years, you know, and, uh, you know, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure how that's going to end up, um, you know, with us next year in terms of filming for that or whether I'm going to end up in L.A. sort of doing, doing sort of some auditions in pilot season at the beginning of the year, but it's, it's kind of an interesting time. We'll see what happens. Mm. Thank you. Okay, this side, you want to ask um, your question? I really like your work. Um, my question is, since you played a good guy and a bad guy in Arrow, which did you prefer to play? And also, I have one little request. Can you say, nice to see you, kid, in the Deathstroke voice? Stay Nice to see you. Well, whatever, this is so feedbacky. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you, kid. Does that work? I don't know. Um, uh, ask, ask the first part of the question again. What, do you, what is it? Um, since you both played both a good guy and yeah. a bad guy, like good slave, bad slave, which mm. did you prefer to play? Yeah. It's, it, you know, it, it's, it's never like that. It's like the characters that I play, like, like Crixus or Slade, it's, it's when you change gears and how much of a contrast you can get when you change gears. You know, because at the end of the day, like I said, on television, you can create characters slowly. And that's, that's the great thing about it. You know, you can win trust in a certain way, then you can change the gear and have people going down that. It's like, it's like, a, you know, it's like a, a roller coaster that you can create. So for me, it's, it's not playing one or the other. And, and I don't really think that human beings are like that. And, and what I like to bring to acting, you know, is, is that range. You know, I, I, I like to, to feel the range, the human capacity to, to, you know, to all of a sudden sort of be in a, in a moment of triumph, but then find yourself in a, in a, in a very dark place as well. You know, I mean, with Crixus, it was, it was really my effort to make people not like the character because I knew later on they'd fall in love with the character because of the friendship with Spartacus. So I, I started off in a gear that even my producer came up to me like four episodes into Spartacus and said, what are you doing? And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, nobody likes you. <laughs> like we're, we're, getting, we're getting messages from fans that they, they want to see you killed off. I said, great. <laughs> and the reason being was um, how I ended up in acting, right? was uh, I actually lost my mother and brother in two car accidents when, when I was young, when I was a kid. And um, I didn't really have a lot of choices because at, at that stage, you know, I was, I was in year 10, I was, I was like 15 years old. So all of a sudden the, the, the school blackboard just became a blur to me. You know, I, I was emotionally, I guess, handicapped in a way. And I, and I needed to find healing 
and it was hard to concentrate on physics and chemistry and all this sort of stuff. So I became an artist. I became involved in dance first, and then I became involved in music. And these things were kind of like a healing for me. You know, they were a way for me to sort of get through that, that stuff. And, um, you know, uh, you know I, I found one particular circumstance that happened was, you know, after I was in the car accident with my mother when she was killed. And so the scars on my face that people say, is that makeup for Spartacus or whatever? It's not. It's, it's the glass that, that cut my face as I went through the windscreen. And I was in a coma for two weeks after that accident. And when I woke up in the hospital, my worst enemy, my worst enemy was at my bedside, a guy called Matthew Sisley. And him and I hated each other at school, hated each other. Everyone thought him and me were always going to fight. We never did. We never actually came to fisticuffs. But it was incredible that this person was at my bedside with, with, any, with, with, with care. You know, he'd, he'd heard about the accident. He came to the hospital. And he came because what I found out later was he'd lost his mother when he was young. I always thought he was just this angry kid at school. And I used to just go, who's, who's this dick? You know, like... He had, a, he had a mullet haircut and he wore death metal shirts and he was just angry. You know, I had a beautiful mother and a safe family and, you know, I had, wore gel in my hair and did break dancing and, and this guy just thought I was a big fag, <laughs> you know. And he hated that I, was, I had popularity or stuff like that, you know, and, and so he used, to, he used to always just, you know, like give me shit. Sorry, kids. <laughs> but, but so him and me hated each other, but, but then all of a sudden... I'd lost my mother, and I had no idea that he'd lost his mother, right? So he's the first person to be standing by my bed when I wake up to this terrible news. Anyway, him and I ended up being best friends. And that's the premise that I took into Spartacus, because I knew that the beginning of the storyline was that Crixus and Spartacus were enemies at the beginning, but they would become like brothers. And I knew that he was the protagonist of the, of the series, so in order to really get a sharp performance up against him as Crixus, I, I, I acted as much the antagonist as I could. You know, all those bathhouse, who watches Spartacus? Okay, so all that stuff in the bathhouse in the first season was all about just being as arrogant and as, as, as much of an antagonist as I could be. Because I knew at some stage it would change. And this is one of, the, one of the great things, you know, about creating long-term long characters is, is you can really sort of form that relationship with the audience as well. So by the time Crixus became a person with a heart, a person who was not saying, shall I begin, but shall we begin, you know, by, by the time he'd made those transitions in the series, people had gone from, like, hating him to kind of loving him, you know, and anyway, I think that's a great story in life because if you can love your enemy, a lot of things have changed in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Uh, the next question this side. It's a pretty um, random question, but if you could play any role in any movie, who would you play and why? Deathstroke. Just so Joe <laughs> Manganiello wouldn't get it. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> Um, oh, God, who would I play? Bond was that. I like it, kid. <laughs> My name is Bond. James Bond. <laughs> um, I, you know what? It would be interesting to play a really badass James Bond. Yeah, yeah. That's a good, good uh, you know. But I, I don't know. I don't think I'm white enough <laughs> for that. I don't know, which is a shame, you know. That is a shame. I had, a, I had an interview earlier about, about stereotype and, 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 you know, nationalities and all that sort of stuff being played in roles. But, and, and, you know, it's a shame that some sort of things like that are sort of out of your reach as an actor because of, you know, things like that. But it's an English character, you know. But, uh, but you know what? The funny thing is, is I did my DNA test and I thought that I was a Maori. I thought I was a New Zealand Maori my whole life. I used to I, I go around doing hakas and teaching people how to do the haka and talking about New Zealand, and then I did my DNA test, and it came back that I was 63% British. <laughs> because my surname, Bennett, 
the Bennets were one of the major forces behind the Church of England. And uh, in the 1500s, I had a relative who was the Lord Mayor of London. Mm. And then I went down to Ireland with my sister about six months ago. And we went down to Clonakilty in Cork and we found these Church of Ireland, which are really the Church of England. And they were full of gravestones with Bennett everywhere. So Bennett was a really big, the Bennett family were a big part of that Anglican church movement, the Church of England, yeah, so Bond. So you could be Bond. <laughs> uh, next Mary question, Bond. this slide. Um, as um, uh, Arrow is in the Flash and Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl, which um, series would you most like Slade to appear on and which character would you most like him to meet? Ooh. <laughs> I'd love to do it. Like, what, what did Liam McIntyre play? <laughs> That'd be kind of funny, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, the weather, the weather, weather wizard. wizard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'd be funny if him, Nick Tarabay, and Katrina Law and I were all in one scene. <laughs> be a big, big Spartacus reunion. Um, I hope I never do crossover. <laughs> <laughs> Any reason why? Or a musical. No. You know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't Slayed know. the musical. That's, I, I don't yeah. know. I, <laughs> That's like that one. <laughs> I, I like just the simplicity of being an arrow and being in the stories with, with you know. I, I, th I think what's happened in this last, as I say, five and six, I think there's a real genuine sort of progression of the storyline that just makes, it's, it's, good, it's a good, solid storyline, you know. And, um, you know, who, who knows? You, you know, you, you'll see the ending of six, and it leaves a, lot of, uh, leaves a lot of doors open, but, you know, it might also be the last... Who knows? Who knows? Mm, Who thank knows? you. We'll find out. Okay, I think this is the last question now on this side, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah, I, I've been wearing a knife badge for just one day now, and already it's kind of annoying me. So I just <laughs> wanted to ask uh, what it's like to have to act with only half your vision, especially during the more physical scenes. The funny thing is, is I've got the eye patch in my bag out there. <laughs> on, my, on my last scene. I just pulled it out a minute ago and went, oh, it's in this bag. There it is. On, on my last scene in, uh, that I shot up in Vancouver, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, I said to the wardrobe person, can I, can I have one thing? Can I have the eye patch? And they were like, okay. <laughs> we got a couple, but you can take that one. So, so I've got it. Who wants to see it? Yeah, see why not? No, I'll see what's out there. Oh, oh, it's not out there. Oh, oh damn! But it's it's back You're in just the green room. Them now. No, I had a feeling that the bag was at the back. Damn it! No, it's not. But it's around. <laughs> you have to borrow it. It's around. Here, yeah, something. yeah. But hey, it's, it's a you know. I mean, it's it's tough wearing that eye patch. You know, it really is. Like you know, because when you walk around a set, there's there's a lot of things down to your right, always for some reason. Mm -hmm. You know, smoke machines or cables or furniture or. <laughs> Stephen Amell taking a snooze. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, you, you hit a lot of things. You've got to be aware of it, yeah. It's, it's, it's funny. Try wearing an eye patch one time. There's, there's one scene where I had to get into the back of a... I think it was in season two when Slade had arrived in Starling City and I was arrested and, and I was inside this, uh, you know... And Oliver said, you know, how did you get off the island? And I said, I swam and all this sort of stuff. And then on the way out, I got sort of followed by these, you know, horde of uh, Starling City press. And I said this thing, you know, if anybody finds Thea Wilson, you know, uh, Thea Queen, so Thea Wilson. Be <laughs> There's a crossover. <laughs> no, Thea, uh, you know, Thea Queen, uh, you know, there'll be a $2 million reward. And then I turned around and I had to slide into the back of this limo. And there was this extra who was holding the, the door and closing it after I got in. And uh, I, I, I said this line, I turned around, I just, I, I did try to do it really fast. You know, I threw my body around and, and to go and slide into the back of this limo. And this extra, I just think he just didn't time it right. And he, he was already closing the door by the time I turned around. And I didn't, I couldn't see out, the, out of that, that side of my eye that the, the door was coming. And I went right into the corner of the door at full, at full body weight. I went oh. like right into my eye. And I honestly thought it had gone like, I thought it had popped. And I rolled into the back of the seat and I was like, Ugh. 
and all these journalists were going, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> and I was going, fuck off. No, I didn't say that. Going, ow, ow. God, I hope there's no kids in here. I keep on swearing. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So that was that was that was the closest I actually came to actually having to wear an eye patch. Uh, yeah. uh, imitating life almost. almost. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to us. Good luck with Shinara season two and Arrow okay. season six. We cannot wait to see it. Give a thank big you, warm thank you to Manu Bennett. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you.